Let's talk about Synology NAS and 10 gigabit networking. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. So I'm making this to share with you a lot of research that I've done to find a 10 gigabit card that will fit into my Synology NAS. I have a DS1618 Plus, which has one PCIe slot so I can get any of the 10 gigabit card and install them in the system. If you have a compatible system that has a PCIe slot, you can pretty much do the same thing. The first thing that a lot of us would do is go to Synology website and look at their add-on card. They do have a lot of options that you can choose from, from using a regular copper cable, RJ45 10 base T networking card to ones that you can use the SFP plus fiber cable like the one that I'm showing you here to do the networking. So there are different cards that they have available. However, one of the things that's really common about Synology card is that it can be rather pricey compared to the other more generic runs that are on the market. Do you have to go with Synology brand only? Not necessarily. Many of the other generic ones, as I'm about to share, are compatible with your Synology NAS as well. For instance, if we take just the regular simple 10 gigabit card that has one port that is using this copper RJ45 10 base T connection, this E10G18-T1, this one can do 2.5, 5, and also 10 gigabit networking. It has one RJ45 port and it is PCIe 3.0 times four. So that's a good card, but this card itself was run around 140 bucks online. And it's not the necessarily the cheapest card. However, the reason why you may want to consider a Synology card is that if you have a NAS that does not have a built-in NVMe slot, such as the one that I have, but it is compatible to use with an add-on card that can do NVMe SSD, such as the one that I'm showing you here or highlight on my screen right now, the E10M20T1. This is the one that's currently installed on my NAS right now. And I have two blades and VME installed on there. And on the back of it, it has one port for 10 gigabit networking. That is a 10 base T RJ45. This tends to work really well. And this would be the reason why you would want to go with a Synology card because they do make some of these combos. However, if your NAS has NVMe SSD built in, or you just dedicated some slot for SSD caching and you don't really need to have a PCIe card with SSD install on there or NVMe, then you don't really have to go with a Synology card. So the one great thing about getting a Synology OEM card is that as long as the card is compatible with the system, you buy it, you install it, it will work right away without any issues. However, there are some other cards on the market that will get you to 10 gigabit networking at a much better price point, And I also think a better value as well. So what you can do is go into eBay and start searching for a card. Primarily two of them that will work really well is Intel and Mellanox. The one from Intel, there are two models that you can choose from. For instance, let's start out with the Intel X540. There's primarily two versions of this card that's compatible with Synology. There's an X540 T1 and also T2. So for instance, what you're seeing on the screen as I'm highlighting right now, this is something that you want to look for. You want to get an Intel card that is a genuine Intel. You don't want to have an Intel card that is made by Dell or made by Sun Microsystem or something like that because sometimes the firmware on those cards can cause conflict with the Synology. So you want to get a vanilla Intel one. For instance, this one wouldn't work either, but this will work just fine. The Intel X540 T2, and this one is another Intel X540 T2. The prices can be all over the place, but you can definitely find a good value online. For instance, this one is selling for 45, although there is a shipping cost there. But this is one of the models that you can look for. So essentially, a few other things that you want to look for beyond just getting a genuine Intel card is you want to consider how many ports for Ethernet you want to have. The Intel X540 will use a standard RJ45 copper connection, so you can run it with your standard CAT6 cable without any issues at all. You don't need to get one of these SFP Plus modules to run them. The only thing you need to consider there is do you want one port or two port. So there is an X540 T1 and there's an X540 T2. T1 has one port, T2 has two ports. Another thing when you look, are searching for these cards is you want to check your Synology and see if it's a low profile version or not. When I say low profile, a lot of these cards tend to ship with these full bracket PCIe. What you want to look for is one that comes already with this low profile bracket as well. This way you can replace it and you don't have to go and search for another vendor to buy this low bracket card in order for it to fit your card into the system. 
Another card from Intel that will also work is the X520, and it comes in two variety. DA1 with one SFP Plus port and DA2 with two SFP Plus. This is very similar to the Mellanox Connect X3. Again, this one comes with one SFP Plus port, and this one, for instance, come with two SFP Plus port. And you can just simply go into eBay and type in Mellanox Connect X3. When you're looking for these, look in the description of it or in the title to make sure that it says SFP Plus and not QSFP because that is a different type of connection or connection cable in general. And it's not going to be compatible with the switch that you have that's 10 gigabit. So one of the cautionary tale about getting a SFP Plus card is that the card itself comes with two of these slots that you would have to get the module to buy and install. So if you want to use an SFP Plus with a regular Cat6 copper base cable, you can. You just have to get a 10 base T SFP Plus module. If you want to use fiber, this is where this flexibility and advantage come in where you can get an SFP Plus to fiber like I'm showing you now and simply just use a fiber cable provided that your switch can also take SFP plus in then you'll be fine. If you have a switch that take cat6 10 base T ethernet cable then it's probably best to look for the Intel 540 this way you can just plug and play without having to look for these fancy cables and buy these extra modules because the moment you start to add these modules into the system the price start to increase because Again, as I mentioned, these modules can run anywhere between $30 to $80, depending on which brand that you get. Now that you know what to look for, there are many great deals that you can get for these 10 gigabit PCIe card on eBay that will work with your Synology system just fine. Have any questions or comment? Leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified, and until next time, in Art We Trust. <laughs>